the tastiest food to eat in Las Vegas. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informed, entertaining. And today, by the magic of the internet, we are joined by Matthew from the channel. Say hi to Matthew. Matthew, welcome to the live stream. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's our, it. it's, yeah, my, it's my pleasure. Uh, and I know we've got lots of folks from the Map Pack that are online in the chat. So, uh, Map Pack, <laughs> welcome to the channel. Uh, and so, without a whole bunch of introductions, because everybody knows the first minute of YouTube videos you can skip because people just tell you everything that you already know, let's just dive right into it, which is Matthew, what's your favorite buffet in Las Vegas or buffets? Well, I would say uh, the Bacchanal Buffet at Caesars Palace would be my number one. Um, I love the Wynn Buffet. And uh, Sterling Brunch is really good. It's only open on Sundays, but the quality of food at Sterling Brunch, as you can see in the picture there, is really good. Uh, definitely a must try. I don't, yeah. I don't think it's not open yet, but when it gets so, back open, I recommend trying that. So, so I saw your video about the Sterling Brunch. And for those people that aren't familiar with it, maybe you can give them a little background about it's like it's Las Vegas' most expensive buffet, right? Yeah, and it seems like they keep raising the price. I believe it's at 125 just before they closed. And, uh, but it is, it's a smaller buffet, but the quality of the food is, is incredible. Like you got the lobster. That's what you're basically paying for. All you can eat like lobster. All you, all you can eat lobster, right? And this is, yep. and it's at, it's at Bally's, right? At Bally's, at Bally's yeah. Which is not so, where you would think of as like the most expensive buffet in Vegas, right? Definitely not. So the, it's, I believe it's the BLT, um, restaurant and during the day, then on Sundays for brunch, they open, they're only open a few hours basically and it turns into the sterling brunch and you have to reserve it like two months in advance or else you're not going to get a seat so was it was it worth 125 dollars? that's what everybody wants to know if you're if you're a foodie it's and you like to eat i definitely recommend it if you're just someone that wants to like the typical like burgers and pizza don't even don't even bother going because you won't get your money's worth but uh, if you want the full experience it's not a, a a normal buffet, I would say. Specialty. I call it a specialty buffet. Yeah, for special occasions. So, yeah. uh, Bacchanal, Wynn, and Sterling were your yeah. three favorites. My favorite is the Wicked Spoon. Uh, the Wicked Spoon, it's at the Cosmopolitan. It's one of the few buffets that's been open throughout this whole pandemic. And yeah. uh, one of the things I like about Wicked Spoon is I like they, they like plate up things in these little plates or little skillets. It's just kind of neat. And they sort of do different yeah. things than the rest of the buffets do. And pro tip, if you're a Marriott, like premier member with Marriott, they've got a whole separate line that you can just show your Marriott card and get in the buffet mm -hmm. quicker. As a Marriott member, you don't even have to be staying at the Cosmopolitan to do that, to bypass the line. It's a good tip. Thank you. I'm sure you've got plenty of good tips too. Uh, all right. So we talked about expensive buffets. Now, what's your favorite meal deal in Las Vegas for the people that are looking for lots of food for cheap? Where should they go to find that? I would say my favorite is Ellis Island, the barbecue place over there. You can get uh, half a rack ribs and uh, half a chicken for thirteen ninety nine, and then if you have a player's card, it's even cheaper. And then they also have another promo: if you play five dollars in the slots, you get another two dollars off, and you're really full. You got the corn, the beans, the coleslaw, the bread, and you're definitely full after that. So, I I love it. It's one of my favorites. Uh, if you're you losing at the tables. Go to Ellis Island, you get a good deal. <laughs> yeah, and so Ellis Island is like one of those kind of like off-strip casinos, right? Would you, would you walk there? Do you drive there? Do you Uber there? How do you, how do you get to the Ellis Island? I usually just Uber it, and it's like I would. I think I was at the link, and it was like five or six bucks. Okay. Um, some people, it's a. I get a mixed reaction when I say to walk there, not walk there. Some people say it's fine. Some people say it's unsafe walking there. So it's, a, I guess, a personal preference, really. So just be aware of your surroundings if you are going to walk there or just take the quick Uber. Yeah, but probably also it, depends it's whether, whether it's 3 p.m. or 3 a.m., whether it's safe or not. Uh, Makes big, a big difference. <laughs> big Swole uh, suggests steak and eggs at Planet Hollywood for eight ninety nine. Uh, thanks for the tip on that, Big Swole. My, uh, one of my favorite places for cheap eats is Earl of Sandwich, but we're going to talk about Earl of Sandwich later. So I thought I was going to share one that I haven't talked about on live streams or Vegas videos before, and it is the Cracker Barrel 
Old Country Store. And Cracker Barrel, it's a U.S. chain, and so some people might be like, Chris, why are you talking about the Cracker Barrel? A lot of people go to Las Vegas that aren't from the U.S., and this is just like a down-home American <laughs> food like pancakes and chicken and waffles for breakfast. I really like the chicken and dumplings at lunch or dinner time. And for like 10 or $12, you get some like massive amount of food. One of their most famous things yeah. is the country fried steak. And um, so Cracker Barrel, it's not on the strip. The closest one to the strip is on Dean Martin Drive, uh, which is kind of like halfway between the Mandalay Bay and South Point. It's right where the Silverton Casino is. So if you're driving on the Interstate 15 in from California, you'll actually see it on the side of the freeway. Uh, and then half of it's a restaurant and then half of it's like an old country store and it gives you this kind of cool old americana vibe uh oc girl and i like cracker barrel so much that we don't actually usually eat at the vegas one but there's one in um like on the way to vegas in and nice. uh, now and now i can't remember the town i like victorville there's a cracker barrel there and so we usually eat at the cracker barrel in uh victorville uh Jim, yeah i've never had it yeah, you should give it a try next time you're there. It's better if you have a car because it's a little bit out there, but if you're looking for some down-home American food, that's one to try. Jim asks if we've ever been to Hattie B's Nashville Hot Chicken at the Cosmo. Yes, I have. I actually have a video with uh, Jacob. He was on your show, Jacob's Life in Vegas. Uh, we had that, and uh, I think it's pretty good. I, I definitely recommend trying it. Have you had it before? Yes, uh, we did. I liked it. Actually, I would say Hattie B's... Uh, wasn't the first Nashville hot chicken that I've had, but it was probably one of the few ones that was actually good. Like sometimes I have Nashville hot chicken and I feel like it's just like blow you away spicy. Uh, and then you're like, I can't eat anymore. Um, but you know, I felt that it was like a good level of juicy, not too spicy, but it's definitely not cheap. You know, Hattie B's is in Cosmopolitan's food hall. Yeah. And basically the term food hall is like food court that's expensive right that's what i think food hall yeah means. i agree yeah. with that for sure uh and yep. then uh, we've also seen a lot of people in the chat uh recommending pepper mill as a staple so good uh and then oscar says what about tacos el gordo matthew what about tacos el gordo uh i've had it once i liked it I know a lot of people hype it up a lot. Definitely good, but I wasn't like, I have to get this every single time, if I'm being honest. But yeah. I, would, I would go back, you know, if you're, you want something not too expensive. Uh, but I don't know. I haven't had every single taco to know exactly which is the best. But what's your opinion? For sure. Well, I can, I can tell you what the best taco is. The best taco at Tacos El Gordo is the Al Pastor tacos. And, and I, so I, I grew up in San Diego, right next to the Mexican border. I've had a lot of tacos. Tacos El Gordo is not the best tacos in the world, but they are $2.60 on the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, and so I give them that. And, and, and they're open late at night. So that's a, another, another good one. Though the lines are long. If you're looking for really good tacos, everybody come, come to San Diego. Come to Los Angeles. That's where you'll find some really good tacos. That's Go to Mexico. Not. You might even find some really good ones there, too. Yeah. Probably the best there. <laughs> All right. Uh, but speaking of late night eats, uh, Matthew, what are, where, where's your favorite spot for late night eats? I'll go with the pepper mill on that one, which is pretty close to Tacos El Gordo. But uh, I love the, the feel and the classic Ve Vegas vibe going into pepper mill. The portions, um, oh, you got the nachos there. That's, the nachos are really good there. Uh, lots of cheese on it if you like cheese. Uh, great price for the portion size, I would say. I, they're not open 24 hours right now, and I hope they get back to that soon because uh, when I get back, I got to go back to pepper mill. Yeah. And the pepper mill, to your point, I think like the coolest thing about the pepper mill is definitely like the vibe and the ambiance, just all like the purple neon, this kind of like old like lounge place. Yeah. Um, and Love for, it. Pe for people that are looking for the pepper mill, it's kind of over down by the Circus Circus next to next to what used to be uh, the Riviera. Um, yep. All right, and uh, we've had a lot of people uh, also echoing the pepper mill, so definitely definitely a favorite. Uh, now, yeah. Now, what about if you're looking for something quick, quick to eat? Pepper Mill takes a bit longer. You got to sit down. You got to have a waiter. What's your favorite quick eats spot? I've been a big fan of Earl of Sandwich at uh, Planet Hollywood. Also open 24 hours. I'm not sure if it is right now. 
Do you know if it is? I, I'm not sure. I don't know if it but, really, uh, a, a lot of things that are usually 24 hours aren't. So it's not, yeah. Mm -hmm. But definitely, since my first trip, um, we don't have this in Canada. So usually, I like to try the different places. Obviously, that we don't have here, and this has been one of my favorites. Um, over the years, they have increased the price a little bit, but still, you're getting a really good quality sandwich for about six dollars or so, and. Um, I think that one in the picture right there is my favorite. I believe it's the Earl's Club. It is the Earl's Club. It says it right yeah. on there. So, yeah. yes, and I've had the Earl's yeah. Club a number of times. And uh, so the first time I had Earl of Sandwich was in Disney World in Florida. They have a location there. And I was in Disney World for like five days. I had Earl of Sandwich on my second day, and then I had it every day thereafter. Uh, and, there and we have one here in Anaheim at Disneyland, but I yeah. tell you, every time I go to Vegas, I go to Earl of Sandwich as well. And in Planet Hollywood, it's right next to the casino. It's a cool spot. The prices are right. You can get a sandwich. Yep. You can get a soup. You can get something that's wholesome. Uh, and my second favorite, I like the Earl's Club too as my number one sandwich. My second favorite sandwich there is the uh, Holiday Turkey Sandwich, which has okay. a turkey, cranberry, and stuff. And so it's basically like an American Thanksgiving dinner all in one sandwich. I think it's pretty good. And I yeah, tell I like people I tell people the Earl of Sandwich, or they, they say they're the world's best hot sandwich. And I agree. I think they're the world's best hot sandwich. Uh, and then a lot of people are like, Chris, are they really? But then <laughs> uh, but then people say that. Rhonda seems to think that they closed the one down at Disneyland. Rhonda, when's the last time you were there? Because I ate at the one at Disneyland three months ago. It closed down, but then it reopened, unless it's closed down again. But, yes, I think that one is back. Um, all right. So uh, now one of my favorite places for uh, – cheap quick eats that I think a lot of people don't really know about because it's not a hotel it's not a casino a lot of people don't talk about it is in the fashion show mall mm -hmm. the fashion show mall the one that has this like big UFO thing at the top of it on the yep. third floor of the shopping mall the whole top floor is like a gigantic food court um, so you can get like hot dog on a stick you can get cheese steaks yeah. uh, probably my favorite place to eat there is the habit burger um so uh the habit so you know everybody knows about in a burger everybody knows about shake shack and i'm sure we're gonna get to burgers we're gonna talk about those things <laughs> uh but the habit burger is another chain that maybe a lot of people don't know about which originally comes out of santa barbara and their burgers are all um like uh, char grilled so they actually cook them under flames so you kind of get that like flame taste to it and my favorite thing to get there is what they call the Santa Barbara style burger, which instead of a bun, they put it on sourdough bread, and then mm. also they put um, avocado good. on it. So uh, yeah, it's pretty good. And uh, yeah, Brand, good things about that place. Yeah, it is pretty good. Um, Brandon says that that building looks like Singapore. It does look like Singapore, kind of this like modern type <laughs> thing. Uh, and uh, Lucky Beach Slots really likes uh, <laughs> the uh, habit better than Pepper Bar. I was laughing because Monster Jam said, raise your hand if you think the Earl of Sandwich is better than Subway. I, y yeah, absolutely, for sure. Way better. <laughs> uh -huh. Sub, for, nice. me, for me, Subway is kind of like a meal of last resort. You know, if I'm like, I'm hungry and there's nothing else. I know Subway yeah. is going to be filling, but... Mm, I don't know if it's going to be delicious. Subs is good. Have firehouse Subs is good. Firehouse Subs? Yeah, Firehouse Subs is yeah. quite good. I like Firehouse. That's really good, yeah. Um, Jersey Mike's. Do you guys have Jersey Mike? Have you had Jersey Mike's? I I did have it once. And in in some I think in an airport, I was somewhere layover for the first time. Yeah. Pretty okay. good. Pretty yeah, good. Well, I still well, think, I think Firehouse Subs and Earl of Sandwich is my two favorites, I think. I definitely like Earl of Sandwich. Uh, better than Firehouse Subs. For me, I, I would put Jersey Mike's above Firehouse. And I would nope. just say maybe the airport rendition might not be the best version of it. Uh, sure. And then Jersey Mike's, if you have it in New Jersey, actually I feel like their bread and things like that is better than all the other ones. Mm. Just I don't know, there's something about yeah. the water and things like that. But uh, <laughs> yeah. the the thing that like uh, Jersey Mike's does well is the all the meats are fresh cut. So like you order no. something and they cut it for you right away, which they might not do in the airport because they don't like knives yeah. or sharp things. I, I don't know. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we've talked about a lot of food that we like. What do you what do you think is something that's it's overrated. You hear people talk about it and you're like, I don't think that's all that. 
My number one spot, I would say, is Blue Ribbon Chicken. It's just outside of Bally's in the little shop there. Um, it was it was okay, but for the price, like that right there, what we're looking at was I think fifteen dollars for three chicken tenders and the fries. And the, like it was, I wasn't even considering like ever going back again. It was just like not. I don't know. Have you had it before? What are your thoughts? I just way, way overrated. People say told me to try it, and I was like, ah. I wouldn't go back for this because like I would go to um, uh, what's it called raising canes and you can get so much more and I think it's better than and you get that amazing sauce than yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I will say that that picture of the chicken tenders and fries that you have looks kind of sad for $15. I have been to Blue Ribbon Chicken and I just got their chicken sandwich, which mm. I thought was pretty good. And what I thought was interesting about the chicken sandwich, they have like a few different types of honey. Um, like three or four different types of honey. Yeah. And so I thought like the different types of honey and the chicken sandwich were good. It was certainly strip prices, but I'll also tell you, I went into eating Blue Ribbon like a couple weeks after they opened. And so I had no expectations other than mm -hmm. it was food and it was, yeah. it, and, it, it, and, and mine looked honestly tastier and, and juicier than yours did. So, and yes, I'd agree with you. If, if you're going for the chicken fingers, Cane's probably does yeah. give you a better value than that. Uh, and Jeff yeah. says, uh, what you have right there looks like an appetizer. And yeah. uh, David says Cane's is number one. Um, oh, and then uh, Troy says, Chris, what red drink are you drinking today? I am drinking watermelon juice. This is watermelon blended with some ice. Mm. Good summer <laughs> beverage. Uh, Matthew, what are you drinking today? Just some water, my favorite drink. <laughs> yeah, any kind of special Good. water you drinking? Real Canadian water. <laughs> I had to not show the, my. <laughs> I'm glad you're not drinking not the fake, fake Canadian stuff. I can't stand the <laughs> fake Canadian stuff. Right? So, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, so uh, the place that I think is overrated, and this is one where like a lot of people said, like Chris, you have to try this. It's amazing is what people call secret pizza at the Cosmopolitan. Ah. Yeah, this is on like the third or fourth floor of the Cosmopolitan. It's down this hallway that looks like this, and there's a pinball machine. There's a pizza place back there, and there's always a long line. The pizza's good, but it's not worth standing in a long line for, and it's also not worth paying the prices that they charge. It is like the most expensive slice of pizza I think I've ever gotten at this place. Uh, Matthew, what do I you agree. think about the, the secret pizza pizza? The not so secret. Pizza. Yeah, that's right. It's not um, secret anymore, right? Yeah, uh, I guess its target is towards after Marquee, the nightclub is done. Everyone likes to go and get late night pizza, which I get. Uh, I think it used to be better. I think over the years, I feel like the slices got smaller and the prices went up more. And I, I don't think this pizza even makes my top five anymore. I used yeah. to like it, but if the more Different, the different pizza places you try in Vegas, you'll find that there's a lot better options. But I mean, if you're at the Cosmo and you want pizza late night, you're just going to go there, right? That's right. But That's right. I agree well, with what you said. For sure. Yes. I, I think it like it satisfies the criteria of if you are looking for an average slice of New York pizza, you'll find one there. And I think to your point about that the pizza game's been upped at a lot of different places, I, I, I think yeah. it's absolutely true, right? Um, the thing the thing for this place that helps it too is the secret part of it. People want to go and find it, so it's more exciting. It's more of an experience than just going to a pizza place, right? That's right. So. That's right. Uh, Kino Kid says uh, secret pizza is super overrated. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Lance wants to know what you think about Gordon Ramsay's fish and chips. I've never had it. That makes two of us. Uh, and I've never had Gordon Ramsay's fish and chips because there's just a ton of fish and chip places in California. So, you know, sometimes people ask me these questions too about like, Chris, what about this ramen place? And I'll be like, <laughs> I'm not going to Las Vegas to have ramen. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, I heard a lot of good things about that place, um, the fish and chips. So a lot of people yeah. say it's good. Yeah, cool. All right. Uh, now on to something that everybody knows you love, the donut bar. Uh, what is your favorite donut to get at the donut bar? My favorite one is the Big Papa Tart Donut, which is, it's like a, it weighs a pound. And uh, there's me in the cardboard cutout. You guys can go take a picture with me. And there's me and Chef Jeff 
where I, sometimes I go and I pretend like I'm working there and help customers. <laughs> and if you look at the bottom there, right in the middle is the s'mores big pop tart They have three different kinds. They got the strawberry and the blueberry. And you can probably feed, you, like two or three people can finish that. It's, it's really good. And if you go and you mention me, little tip for everyone, you get 10% off at the donut bar. And they're definitely my favorite donuts I've had anywhere. So, and you got to go early because they do sell out. So like by lunchtime, they're uh, pretty much gone. Specialty donuts on the weekend, like they have a they have a grilled cheese donut and a French toast donut. I know a lot of people, the Matt Pack, they they go there a lot, so they know all about the donut bar. But right, uh, right definitely on. recommend going. For for people who haven't been to the donut bar, where where in Vegas is the donut bar? Where are they going? Is so, it down a secret hallway in the Cosmopolitan too? Or no, it's okay. <laughs> it's uh, just off of Fremont Street on Sixth and Carson. So it's like just a minute walk from Fremont Street Experience, which most people know, the big canopy. Um, you just, the key is you got to go early for better options because they do sell out. So yeah, if you're staying downtown, usually if I'm on the strip, I'll just take an Uber there early in the morning. But if you're staying downtown, it's an easy walk from any of the casinos there. That's cool. Kai Lani is going there tomorrow morning. Great, Kai Lani. Enjoy and, it. And now you got a great <laughs> tip from Matthew. Mention, say hi to Matthew and get 10% yep. off. That's a great yep. tip. Uh, but I will tell you, my favorite place uh, for like desserts in Vegas, uh, or at least one of, my, one of my favorite places, is in the Venetian in St. Mark's Square, that like most kind of like neat looking square in the Venetian, and it's called mm -hmm. Paris Baguette. And it's an interesting chain. It's a chain from Korea. It is a Korean French pastry chain um but i will i will tell you the koreans do the french pastries super good lots of fruity pastries i like pastries with fruits and strawberries and berries so you can get like strawberry tarts and these tarts and then something a lot of people don't know is that inside paris baguette after you've gotten your food there's like this little hidden staircase i mean it's not secret in the same way the pizza place is but there's a staircase that you can go up to the second floor of it and then you get these uh, kind of like bird's eye views of the St. Mark's Square from it. So it's like a cool place to nice. eat like a $5 dessert uh, and enjoy that square. Uh, and uh, Rhonda says that's interesting uh, Korean French fusion. It is an interesting Korean French yeah. fusion. Yeah. And uh, Kino Kid says uh, we have a donut bar in our town. Come visit Matthew. Kino Kid, what, uh, what's your town so that uh, Matthew knows how to find? I mean, Matthew knows where you live, Kino Kid, but I, I don't. Uh, Eric wants to know if the buffets are still closed. Some of them are open. And I hope more follow that and keep opening before I get back. <laughs> yes. The, the, right. So the buffets that are currently open, you'll find the Wicked Spoon at Cosmopolitan is open. The South Point Buffet is open. The Caesars Palace uh, Bacchanal Buffet is open, which now takes reservations. Pro tip, make a reservation. And uh, sure. the, the Wynn Buffet, uh, if it's not open already, it's opening real soon now. I think July 1st. Okay. I think July yeah. 1st is that was, scheduled. That, believe, that, yeah. that was the date that was in my head, and now that you've confirmed it, then that's yeah. the date. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then Brooke wants to know if Krispy Kreme is still in the New York, New York. I Last time I was... It, it's, not, it's not in New York, New York. I think it's... Isn't it... Somewhere on the way to Excalibur or something between Excalibur and Luxor, I believe. I don't. I, I don't do, remember. I do seeing think it. there's a Krispy Kreme over there. Yeah, I think you're I right. I don't know if there's one in New York, New York. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like that Excalibur food court, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, all right. So um, we've been talking about desserts. Uh, do you have any suggestions for other desserts that you like? Um, I like uh, milkshakes. Milkshakes. All right. Milkshakes. Yeah, where's your favorite milkshake? I, like milkshakes. Um, I would say, so it's a little different because it's a, a gelato milkshake. It's um, at Aria Patisserie, and I get the cookies and cream one, and it's so good. Um, it's it's light. It's not as heavy. Usually, when you have like a regular milkshake, you feel so heavy after. The gelato makes it lighter, and. Uh, I think that one in the picture there is it's like nine dollars, so it's not a cheap milkshake, but it's definitely worth trying. And um, if you want something like 
really crazy for like an Instagram picture, I would say go to Black Tap and you would share that with like three people. It's like very like sugar overload on that one. But this one is like a good milkshake and you're not going to feel so heavy after. So I recommend it if anyone hasn't tried it. Not too many people talk about it because yeah. you, a lot of um, the pastries there, you don't, there's like the ice cream, but no one really knows you can get it into a milkshake. So they have other, all kinds of flavors. That's for sure. As someone who likes fruity pastries, I like the pastries at Aria. Um, yeah. And I usually get like the raspberry macaron or something like that. I've never had the shake, so I'll give that a try. Uh, but your point about the ones at Black Tap, for people, we don't have a picture, but if you want to like visualize like a shake at Black Tap, think of like a big shake that you would get in like a glass thing at like a sit down 50s diner. And then on top of that, put a big slice of carrot cake and then on top of that put like a scoop of ice cream and, yeah. and and matthew's laughing because it's not ridiculous this is actually what their shakes look like you literally get a slice of cake on top of your milkshake and so they are yeah something. there's all different kinds they have do different kind of desserts on top of your milkshake yeah, so like yeah. i said it's great for a picture uh it tastes pretty good but you don't want to i finished one by myself and like I had a big uh, sugar rush after that. <laughs> I, bet, I, bet, I, bet, I bet you did. This is like the time that, uh, you know, OC Girl wanted to get one of those, like, margaritas that you see on the sidewalk that are like this. Yeah. Like, you know, and the three-foot tall margarita <laughs> isn't really meant to be uh, drank by one person, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, let's see. We've heard a couple recommendations on other milkshakes. Monique recommends uh, boozy milkshakes at uh, Holstein's at the Cosmo. And Alex recommends the Ghirardelli Soda Fountain. And Real Bronze says we've now hit the cake segment. Of, uh, yeah, we'll just talk about cake. This is the, it's the cake channel now. Uh, <laughs> you like to tease me about yeah, the cake. Good. Is there, is there a story behind the cake, Matthew? Uh, yeah, so because I can't go to Vegas because all this uh, craziness in the world, uh -huh. I made a cake video, uh, a Buddy V, not Buddy V, um, yeah, Buddy V's cake vending machine, and it became my most popular video. Okay. Like, I don't know, I don't know yeah. where, so yeah. it's kind of a joke in our stream. We joke about the, you're a cake channel now, not a Las Vegas channel. Right on. So it's, that's the ongoing joke. <laughs> right on, right on. Well, you know, I guess it's funny. On that. It's like, it's hard to tell, right? Like what videos are going to do super great and what videos Never are. Know. Yeah. <clears throat> and of course, you know, my video that's gotten the most views, which probably cemented me as a Las Vegas channel is the five worst cheap hotels on the Las Vegas Strip. And, you yeah, know, which has gotten like a, a, video. Couple, get a couple million views. And then people are like, Chris, it's, I don't know, like why in the video, why didn't you show more of the rooms or stay more in, in these hotels? And I was like, I didn't know this video was going to go on and have a couple million yeah. views. I'm like, and I'd, I've stayed in some of them before, but I'm also like, if I knew it was going to have two million views, I would have sprung yeah. the 40 bucks to go inside and record the rooms. I'm like, I've been to the Circus Circus Manor rooms before. I have no desire to go back, really. So that's <laughs> Maybe it. for a video. Come on now. <laughs> that's, 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 that's right. Well, again, again, if I knew it was a 2 million view video, I, I would have done again, it. Yeah. But, well, maybe you know, it's time for an update. Recreate it now, maybe. 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 That's right. Uh, cake, Rhonda, cake, cake. Rhonda says cake, cake, cake. And uh, Troy funny. says Matt doesn't eat cake and he's not a gambler. Um, another another uh, joke for the... <laughs> They, they're all, they're go, I see the chat over here. Matt B is saying there's a lot of stories. How much time do we got? These guys, they're all, they're funny. They're funny Good. people. <laughs> Good. Uh, my dad, Electric Rick, says, I think you should do a pie video. I don't know. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a collaboration pie. we can do. We can do a whole video about pie or something like that. Uh, that's right. And Austin says, if I did stay at the manor rooms, I would have spent $27 for the room and $107 in fees, <laughs> which is probably Thank true. You. That's probably true. Uh, all right. So uh, now on the notion of shakes, uh, here we go. So my favorite uh, place for shakes on the Las Vegas Strip is at Shake Shack. Uh, I think you can't go wrong with Shake Shack. In particular, Shake Shack always has some seasonal shakes. Uh, so like right now for Pride Month, they're having like a Pride Shake that has like some like guava and like some tropical things in it. Sometimes they've had uh, like for April – April time, they'll have like the cherry blossom themed shake. Now, this is one of those where like if you go and have like a double cheeseburger and some fries at Shake Shack, you won't have any room left for the shake. So it's definitely one of those <laughs> where you like get your burger and then come back an hour or two later and then and then get your shake so you can actually uh, eat him all. 
I prefer um, the, the frozen custard over the milkshake. The frozen custard is really good. You're right. Yeah. I do like the frozen custard too. That's really good. Yeah. Well, and I think if you're looking for the um, the price value, I think that the frozen custard is a better value. Right? The shakes are like 6 or $7, where the frozen yeah. custard is like $4 or something like that. So Both definitely good for yeah. sure. Uh, Mar Martin says, don't ask him any math questions. Another joke. Just okay. skip on from Martin. He's a, <laughs> he's a silly goose. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, and uh, Austin says uh, that uh, the Christmas seasonal shakes at uh, Shake Shack. Indeed. I love the seasonal shakes at Shake Shack. Uh, all right. So we're talking about Shake Shack. Let's talk about burgers. What are your favorite burgers okay. in Vegas? For a fast food burger, I'm going with the classic. I'm sure everyone's going to say the same answer. Is In-N-Out or Shake Shack? And the way I decide between the two is wherever you're closer to at the time, go to. So if you're staying close to Shake Shack, go there. Go to If you're at the link, go to In-N-Out. Both, you can't go wrong. Um, yeah, both really good. And then for, for like a sit-down burger place, Holstein's I really like. Uh, I think it's called the Gold Standard Burger. That's uh, one of my favorites. Uh, really good. And they have good milkshakes too, I think someone mentioned earlier. And uh, yeah, I recommend all those. What 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 makes the gold standard burger a uh, you know a tasty burger? <laughs> it was just like the quality of the the meat, like everything just was so fresh. It was it it's a little it's expensive if you're paying for the experience, but I would say um, definitely worth expensive. trying. Hundred hundred twenty five dollars? Is it like a sterling brunch level expensive, or what are what are we talking definitely, about? Definitely definitely not. I <laughs> okay. think it was like it was like eighteen dollars. I think just for the burger. So All comparing right. that to like In and Out and Shake Shack, it's a big sure. jump, right? Sure, but I think there's somewhere in Vegas they do have a thousand dollar burger, or no, I think it's a seven hundred and seventy seven dollar burger. Uh, maybe I'll get that one day, <laughs> jackpot burger. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I forgot where it is though. Do you know? Do you know which one? I think I it's at Mandalay Bay. Maybe, maybe the yeah. chat knows. I'm not sure. I, I can't don't. remember. Did, Even if they still have it, I don't know. Yeah. Does anybody know where Las Vegas's most expensive burger is? Let us know. <laughs> Rhonda says, "In and out all day anyway." White Castle will send you to the hospital. I. I feel the same way about White Castle. Uh, Nancy says the best burger is a Guy Fieri's mac and cheese burger. I've heard Nancy good. Thank you. She's heard right. Good, have That's you had that too. one, Matthew? Yeah, yeah. Guy, I like the mac and cheese burger is really good. He's got a pulled pork sandwich on a pretzel bun. is really good, too. I recommend that place. Definitely yeah. good. Uh, what are your thoughts on wall burgers? All right. No good. Yeah. I, overrated. They have, they have good uh, sweet potato tots. They're good, but the burger, I would, probably wouldn't go back. Yeah, I've I've not eaten there. I just kind of looked at the place and and uh, opted out. Jet said, uh, "Cosmopolitan, seven hundred seventy-seven dollar burger." Oh, is that is the Cosmo? It? Okay. Well, and then JR Food and Travel says Posh Burger has a hundred dollar burger new spot at Aria. Oh, so ooh, all right, that's Jets a video I have to and do. JR. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's right. Matthew's like, I think I can spring for that one. I don't know about the seven hundred seventy-seven dollar yeah. one. Yeah, on that one. Yeah. So speaking of In-N-Out Burger, the recommendation I'll give to y'all is if you're going to In-N-Out Burger, there's two locations that are unlike the other ones. Uh, the first one is the one by the link, which is the one by the Ferris wheel. Uh, it has a small company store next to it. So if you want to buy some special In-N-Out merchandise, there's a small window next to the entrance of the store where you can buy about 10 or 15 In-N-Out Burger items. Most In-N-Out Burgers, you can only buy, actually all In-N-Out Burgers except for three, uh, you can only buy t-shirts. But hmm. at the link, you can buy about 10 items. But if you go to this one, which is the In-N-Out Burger off of Tropicana, so you can see like the Luxor in the distance. It's on the other side of the Interstate 15 from the Strip. But this one has the In-N-Out Burger company store where you can get In-N-Out Burger beach towels, In-N-Out Burger flip-flops, and In-N-Out Burger Christmas ornaments. And um, I will say, uh, I don't think if you say my name, you get a discount in there, but I'll say that I go in there so often that they actually <laughs> recognize me. They're like, you're that guy that did the Cheap Beats video about Vegas and talked about the In-N-Out Burger at the, uh, the strip and it's like the same people that work at that company store as work at the company store on the link and so sometimes oh. on a trip I might see them at one and then I'll see them at the other one on the same trip they're like it's you again That's I'm funny. like yeah it's, it's me again <laughs> I got my in and out yeah, Christmas ornaments and now I need to get my in and out Christmas lights you know so yeah 
Yeah. We got to get them to get a discount with using your name. We got to <laughs> make that happen. We huh? do. We should make that happen. If yeah. there's anybody on this that's working for In-N-Out Burger, let's talk. Um, yeah. And uh, Monster Jam says In-N-Out is one of the most underrated burger places. Monster Jam, you and I, we could totally be friends. So, uh, <laughs> All right. And uh, Joshua says my favorite burger was the pastrami burger at the Pepper Mill. Um, oh, never had that one. Yeah. All right, now let's talk about um, some more upscale beef options. What about steak? What do you think are the best steakhouses Ooh. in Vegas? Well, I haven't had all the steakhouses, but for, I've had a bunch of them. I'm trying to check off my list and go to every single one eventually. Uh, I like Oscars. That's probably my favorite. Circus Circus is really good, and before everyone judges Circus Circus, um, the best thing at Circus Circus is the steakhouse, and it gives you that classic Vegas feel in there. Really good, and they have a really good deal too. I think it's like sixty-eight dollars for the steak and the sides. Other places charge you extra for the sides. And the ammo, which I believe the picture on the left is, that's the, I think the filet mignon and a lobster tail. Very tasty, and they have a the zip sauce is amazing sauce for the steak. And on the right, you got um, Oscars. I, the ribeye, I believe, and a bunch of appetizers there. And you got the nice view of Fremont Street looking down there. And uh, very nice, relaxing, and classic Vegas feel at Oscars, too. Recommend cool. Os all. There's, Oscars there's is in the plaza? Where, where's Oscars? Plaza, yeah. 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 Right, on, right on top, um, on the second floor. So where the restaurant is now, that used to be their pool. That used to be the pool there at, oh, at where okay. the Oscars restaurant is. Yeah. Interesting. Pretty cool. Um. And uh, Claudia just joined in and said, uh, good evening from Germany, just joined when it comes to in out, perfect time to join. And uh, honestly, Bridget says, uh, say hi to Matthew for a free meatball. I'm not sure. Not where. anymore. <laughs> Expired. Where, where was it that? To, it was at Oscars. Oh, I see okay. Justin in the chat. He said, Oscars is dead to me because another little joke, they, they, <laughs> they, the deal is expired. Ah. So, um, so yeah, now you, you don't get the free meatball. But when you mentioned me before, you would get a free meatball appetizer, which their meatballs are really good too. I still recommend you guys check it out. It's good. it's a good place. And then my favorite uh, server there, his name is Bobby, and he's he's amazing. So if you ever see him, tell good him deal. I said hi. <laughs> All right, cool. Ask ask for Bobby's table maybe if you're there. Um, yeah. So my favorite uh, steakhouse is Mastro's. This one's at uh, Crystals. Yeah, and uh, Mastro's, it's another its another steakhouse chain, but they just do the steaks like super good, and the staff there, they're kind of like, they're not maybe wearing tuxedos, but they're close to tuxedos. I mean, you just feel like super good, and in particular also, if you go to Mastro's, save room for dessert and get the warm butter cake, it's like a pound cake with you know, 12 sticks of butter in it. I don't know. Mm. And homemade whipped cream. It's super delicious. So uh, if you go to Mastro's, make sure you save room for the butter cake. Jill asks, what's your favorite special occasion restaurant? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think it's always a special occasion every time mm -hmm. you go to Las Vegas. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It is. Uh, my choice is always, I like, I like the buffets. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Buffets are good, but for a special occasion, uh, any of the steakhouses, you can't go wrong. If you're, if it has, if it's at like a major resort, you're gonna get good quality steak, and you're always, it's gonna be good. There's also some places off the strip. I heard, um, uh, what's the one, the Golden Steer is off the, it's slightly off the strip. I haven't had it, but I heard great things about it, and that's definitely on my list to try. Have you had that before? No, no, I haven't had that one. No. Like you can sit in like different booths from like famous people. Like they have the Frank Sinatra booth and stuff where he would eat. So that's definitely on my list to check out. Yeah, that's cool. The steak I was showing from uh, Maestro said it looks like the steak at Peter Luger. It did actually look like the steak at Peter Luger's because most steakhouses that you go to, they don't um, cut the steak like that. Um, but uh, yes, it does look like Peter Luger. I think it's tastier than Peter Luger's and you don't have to pay in cash. Uh, Matthew, have you have you eaten at Peter Luger's in New York City? Do you know about Peter Luger's in New York City? No, yeah, no, I haven't had so it. This, so this is another one of my, uh, you know, inside things on Yellow Productions. One of my top viewed videos was my video titled "The Best Steak in New York," Peter Luger's, mm. which everybody considers the best steak in New York. And okay. at the end of my three minute video, I said, "Like it's great steak if you got a bunch of cash that's burning a hole in your pocket." <laughs> and and then people are like, you don't know steak. But then like uh, the New York Times food reviewer like 
just like revisited it. Like, you know, that's one of those where like, you know, they gave it a great review 30 years ago and they just went back like a year ago, two years ago before the pandemic and gave it like zero star. It was a zero star review from the New York Times. Wow. That, was, that was how much this place has kind of gone. That's downhill. not good. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that's bad. All right. All right. We've talked a lot about pizza, but let's go ahead and kind of like hit pizza as a subject. What do you think is the best uh, pizza in Las Vegas? Pizza Rock. I think Pizza Rock, uh, it, it's amazing. I believe they have four different ovens for different kinds of pizza. And this picture here, you got the Detroit style and the New York slice. What I usually do is go to the slice house, which is the to-go counter, and they'll reheat the slices. And then you can uh, sit at the bar if you want, and you can bring it over there. They're totally fine with that. That's like if you want to wait for a fresh whole pizza and uh, you want to sit down. Like that That Detroit Detroit slice in the bottom there, that looks like a really good one. That that's a nice it juicy does. slice. They, bo they right both there. look pretty good. Well, I, I like the I like the size of the pepperonis and kind of how they look like they get a bit crispy. Pepperoni cup. Uh, yep. Yeah. For those that aren't in the know about Detroit style pizza, if you're like, what the what is Detroit style pizza? It's cooked in a square pan, uh, ostensibly a pan that would be used to collect oil from a car. Detroit style yep. pizza. So yep. and they put uh, the cheese right to the edge, and then it, it melts and gets that nice crust. And then, as you can see, the sauce, uh, the sauce, instead of being underneath the cheese, is on top of the cheese. Yep. Uh, my favorite pizza spot is the pizzeria at New York, New York, which uh, oh it's not Detroit-style pizza, but it's Sicilian-style pizza. So I guess you – yeah, I guess, Matthew, you and I kind of have that in common of liking our uh, like pizza with like stuff that goes to the edge. You know, and it's, it's one of those where, like, you don't find good, like, square pan pizza in a lot of places. And then no. – yeah, at the New York, New York, you can get like a a beer and a slice of pizza for eight dollars and eighty eight. Yeah, cents, good so. deal. And yeah. this is the one that's um, not. There's two pizza places. One, the one upstairs in the escalator there. It's called New York Pizzeria. It's not as good as this one. This yeah, one good. is on the Th level. Thank you, thank you. That's right. This one's called like Sirico's or Sirocco's yeah. or something like yeah. that. It's However, on the floor with the casino. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. don't um, get sucked in by the one that's like right off of the the bridge that comes in. Yeah, yeah. Because if you wanna... did, you'd be like, Chris told me to go eat at the <laughs> pizzeria at the New York, New York. This place is, yeah. you know, yeah. This Probably... one's definitely good. The yeah. one the the New York pizzeria, their stromboli is pretty good. I wouldn't get their pizza, but they have a good stromboli. Okay, good tip. Just a suggestion. If you're if you're if you don't feel like walking downstairs or taking the escalator to get this one, <laughs> right on there. Yeah, it's just yeah. too too far to lumber down there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Now, uh, you know, with with the pandemic and just the way Vegas is, places come and go. Um, you know, what's your what's what's a place that's closed down that you think you miss the most? Well, I'm a pizza guy. Everyone knows I love pizza, and Aria's five fifty pizza is gone and it's replaced by i forgot what it's called sports bet betting or money line pizza that's what it's called and this 550 pizza area was the best pizza on the strip maybe up there with with the pizza rock but definitely on the strip my favorite pizza and i'm i'm pretty sad that it's gone because i'll never have it again yeah, yeah <laughs> have you I had it before I, yeah i really liked 550 yeah. as well that would be like for me again i i, I love pizza one of my favorite so if, yeah. like if people ask me like chris what do you want to eat i will usually say hamburger pizza mexican if i get hamburger pizza mexican like i'm good and so i could get my 550 pizza and then i could go to the aria patisserie and get some yeah you know raspberry that's... dessert so there you go right. perfect yeah yeah, they that and even so now Burger Lounge at Aria was good too, and now it's gone. To, it, now it's the new one, the Posh Burger. So uh, I gotta, I gotta try both places now and yeah, see how they are. But from from what I hear, this pizza, the new pizza place is definitely not as good as Five Fifty, which yeah. makes me That's, sad. That is sad. <laughs> uh, the place I missed the most that closed down was in uh, downtown Vegas, just a block off Fremont Street, uh, and it was called Flock and Fowl, and they uh, specialized in Singaporean-style chicken rice, um, which <laughs> it's not a dish you can get many places, almost anywhere in the U.S., and this place did it really good. Uh, I think... My understanding is they were like a small shop before in Vegas. They had some investors that said like, hey, we'll go in on this place that's, you know, on like 
three units off Las Vegas Boulevard. We'll pay for it. You run it. They had a disagreement. And so the people that owned it are putting another concept. I think the people that own this place have said they're looking for another location to still serve their Singaporean chicken rice. But if that's something you like, then be on the lookout for hopefully Flock and Fowl uh, reopening again. Um. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, we have 15 more minutes in our show about the best food in Vegas. Vegas foodies here. If you asked a question and we didn't get to it, go ahead and ask it again. Or if you had a question you haven't asked yet, go ahead and put it in the chat. Make sure you put a question mark uh, after the question because I look for questions question marks as I put them up. And by the way, for the folks that are here from the Matt Pack, you know, drop a hashtag Matt Pack in the chat and I'll shout you out and welcome you to the channel. Uh, <laughs> Rhonda asks if he's tried the big chicken yet. Uh, Shaq's big chicken, if that's what she's talking about. I have, I did have it. If that's the one, I'm not sure that's the place she's talking about, but uh, it's pretty good. Uh, they have a giant cookie. It's literally this big. And it's like it's like ten dollars, but it's a really good cookie. <laughs> but the chicken sandwiches there is good. Yeah, if cool. Place. Yeah, she said yeah. Okay. What's the worst buffet you've eaten at? MGM Grand. Mm. Ah, so bad. It I, it used to be decent, not good. It was decent, but the last time I had it, it was just like it was so bad. Everything was cold. Half the things were like empty. It was just no. <laughs> Uh, have you eaten at the Circus Circus or the Excalibur Buffet? Nope, I haven't. Yeah, okay, those are my two worst ones. They're probably worse. Yeah. I've, I, I, I've not eaten at MGM Grand, but I've eaten at both the Excalibur and Circus Circus, and they were just sad and pathetic. So uh, I just I just asked that to see if, you know, you're like, where was that? Because I was like, if it's yeah. worse than those, then... Pretty bad. Uh, Terry wants to know if you've yeah, been to Lobster Me. Uh, no, it's on, it, it's on my list. On my list to try for sure. Venetian, uh, looks Planet Hollywood, good. both. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, OC Girl really likes uh, lobster rolls, so we've had it and we like it. Have you, have you had uh, Luke's Lobster, I believe? We've also had There's Luke's Lobster. At, yeah, I yeah. had Luke's Lobster at the um, hmm, the mall with the thing, yeah. the fashion show mall, yeah. right, yeah, yeah, that we yeah, talked yeah. about earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good, too. Yeah. Um, but, I'm going to uh, try it for sure. Yeah. Uh, Kevil says, uh, Kevil's here from the map pack. We've got uh, yeah. Seeking Vegas Sunrise. We got Kino <laughs> Kid. We got go. Matt B. Uh, we've got Yvonne hanging out with us. We got Troy. We got Real Braun. We got Johnny. We've got Jeff who wants to know why Matt is so cute. We got Nancy. Oh. <laughs> we got another Matt that's part of the Matt Pack. Uh, yep. And uh, we, got a, we got a few more. I'll, I'll be shouting out Matt Packs all night if I... Everyone uh, in the Matt Pack, some. if you guys are new to Yellow Production, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Everyone oh. in the Matt Pack. Oh, well, thank you, Matt. I appreciate Definitely. it. Definitely. Thumbs up and subscribe. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you that haven't been over to Matthew's channel... Because you might not have, right? I mean, we all we haven't been to everybody's channel. Uh, definitely yep. subscribe to Matthew's channel for some Thank great you. Vegas content. And Guy says, I'm a sub to both. Thank you, Guy. Awesome. Nice. All right. JR Food or Travels asks, yellow or blue? Blue. <laughs> blue, all right. There we go. I'm going to say yellow, as I have to say. Uh, Mess 700 says, what's the best dessert in Vegas? Mine is the 24 chocolate layer cake at the strip house. Hmm. Best dessert. You know, I'm not sure. I, what's your answer for that one? What would you say? I don't know my best dessert. Maybe uh, Oscars has a really good cookie, yeah. uh, like a giant cookie on a skillet with ice cream on it. That's really good. But, I mean, I haven't really had too many specific dessert places to – to answer that so cool. what do you think what what it's like it's hard to say best because there's so many good things but one i will name uh at the paris hotel i really like the creperie there's a place that makes mm. dessert crepes that they do up and yeah you know, there's a lot of places that make crepes but like it's like the side job for people to make crepes or it's like high school kids yeah. that makes the crepes but like <laughs> at the paris because it's the paris hotel they make yeah, really good be good there yeah they make really good mm. crepes. Shaft wants to know what's the best breakfast on the strip. 
on the strip. Um, hmm, the Henry is yeah, the Henry is pretty good. I don't know on the strip. I would say like, oh, I like I do like Hash House of Gogo. I do like theirs. Um, very big portions for pretty decent price. Also there, uh, I would say maybe there. That's my favorite. What about you? Cool. I like uh, Egg Slut at the Cosmopolitan. Ooh, uh, yeah, that's and pretty good. just because I don't, I don't like to sit down forever for breakfast because I feel like I'm Quick. wasting my time away at the destination, you know? So I prefer kind of the uh, grab-and-go places. Uh, Matt, you've got at least one new sub from uh, Wu Taiwan yeah. Nostalgia. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate awesome. that. Uh, Kyle wants to know if you have any opinion on Lago. Haven't had it. I have also not had it. So, therefore, I have no opinion. Veronica wants to know what's the best place for sushi, and she's part of the Matt Pack. Um, sushi, I don't really get sushi in Vegas because when I go for sushi, I like all you can eat sushi. Mm. I don't really like to go to Nobu and, and get a one piece for the price of a all you can eat. So I, I don't know, but I say I'm a fake sushi eater. I like the vegetable rolls, the veggie rolls more than like the raw fish. So I'm not really a, you can't really talk to sushi, talk sushi to me, but what do you think? Okay. Well, I also don't have sushi in Las Vegas because I live near Los Angeles. There's so many great sushi restaurants here that I have mm -hmm. no idea why I'd go to a place where the fish is four hours less fresh than it is here in California. <laughs> so, uh, Veronica, unfortunately, yeah. we, we have no answer for you. Um, and uh, Seeking Vegas Sunrise says we got at least three pieces at Nobu, probably for like $100 or something, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you, though, I am like, I'm a sushi eater, and I didn't used to be. I used to hate sushi. Mm -hmm. But as many people know, my channel has a whole ton of Japan travel. We go to Japan all the time. And then I mm -hmm. had like, yeah. like $300 a person really good sushi. And then I was like, oh, this is... <laughs> Very this, good. Is, this is really good. What was that other stuff that I had, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. The real um, stuff. That's right. I will definitely pass on any of, like, the supermarket sushi. Um, let's see. Kyle asked about best tacos. We talked about tacos El Gordo. Uh, Matthew, is there another place you like for tacos in Vegas? Uh, not really. I, I think Taco El Gordo would be – that's the answer. I don't yeah. know. I, I don't even know what other places really. Uh, maybe Nacho Daddy. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good, too. Right. Um there's also like a little salsa in Planet Hollywood. I mean, it's not mm. amazing, but if you're looking for cheap breakfast, Planet Hollywood uh, La Salsa in the back has a pretty cheap mm. breakfast. Monster Jam just subscribed to Matt. Thank you, Monster Jam. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Thanks, everybody. And Wu Taiwan wants to know uh, if either of us have had the fresh fish from the market in Tokyo. Not me. I have from Tsukiji, which is the former fish market like it's moved it has another name but yes i've had some of the fresh fish that you like stand in line for like an hour or mm. two to get it it's good okay. but you stand in line for a couple hours because it's 20 bucks i'd rather pay 40 dollars and not stand in a two-hour line <laughs> but again that's just me right yeah. by the time i paid like five thousand dollars to go someplace my uh my two hours is worth a bit more than 20 dollars matthew wants to know where the best hot dogs are dirt dog definitely dirt dog for me very good. Uh, that, that's a hot dog on a, a different level. <laughs> not a normal hot dog, but what, good. What, what makes it different? I've not eaten a dirt dog. Oh, okay. So they have they, – they, it's like fully loaded. You can get like a, a chili dog and then you can get one with like fries inside the hot dog. And it's not – it's like um, – I don't know. The, the bun is not like a regular hot dog bun. It's – I don't even know what they would use. It's almost like a, like a Texas toast almost I mm. think as a bun. Kind of like that. But it's like extreme hot dogs and they have all different kinds. Uh, there and then uh, a good hot dog deal. I don't know, uh, they still have it, but at Casino Royale, what is it, 199 for the hot dog? Yeah, it's skip cheap, that. right? Yeah, <laughs> right, it's cheap, cheap, it. it's cheap. If yeah. you want it, the cheapest hot dogs are at South Point, uh, they're cheaper, Point? they're like a dollar fifty at uh, the hot dog cart there. At that but point, I, you just you might as well go to Costco. I, well, I was, I was gonna say that actually, like, I love Costco, it's a dollar fifty, you know, yeah, it's In, really good. In my in my Hawaii like my Maui cheap eats video, I'm like dollar fifty hot dogs at Costco all day. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, I'm really good. Can't go wrong with that. That's right. Um, let's see. Uh, Justin gives a tip on that. This is the Cromwell has sneaky good uh, sneaky good hot dogs. All right, this is a good question. The little ones. 
Yeah, for you, Matthew, as a Canadian, mm -hmm. best poutine in Las Vegas. By the way, for people who don't know what a poutine <laughs> is, because probably a lot of people don't, yeah. if you could explain what that is first. And you might not even sure. know, because I don't know that I've had a poutine in Las Vegas. But first, explain what that is and then give yeah. your answer. So it's French fries, cheese curds, and then gravy on top. Some people, whenever I tell my American friends about it, they all say, oh, that sounds gross. But trust me, it's so good if you get a good one. Yeah. Now, there, I there was a it place. It is good if you get a good one. Keep going. Yeah. There was a place, I think by the, by the pawn shop, you know, the, the, the pawn stars. Yeah. There was a place there called Smokes Poutine, which is a very popular place here in Toronto. Mm. But I guess not enough people knew about it and it closed down. So now I don't really know where you can get a really good poutine. I believe at Bar Canada at the D, they have a poutine from what I hear. So I'm going to try it and let everyone know how it is. But uh, I, have, I don't really go there to eat poutine since I have right. good poutine here. So, for sure. But for, for research purposes, I'll be on it. <laughs> that's great. That's great. I feel the city in the U.S. that has the best poutine is Denver. For some reason, Denver. poutine is like a thing in Denver. Like almost every restaurant in Denver has a poutine. That's where I've had my yeah. best poutines in the U.S. have been in Denver. Uh, we asked about sushi. Fellow explorer Ted uh, said, go to a place called Izakaya Go. Awesome sushi with half the price you'd pay at a sushi place on the strip. So yeah. thank you for that tip. Good tip. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. Well, fellow explorers, every live stream, I always give away a Yellow Productions Crew t-shirt for someone who can answer one of my questions. If you answer this question correctly, I will send you a Yellow Productions Crew shirt anywhere in the world. And you have to be the first person to answer it according to whatever comes up first on my chat. And so my question for you is, where in Las Vegas can you find a cardboard cutout of Matthew. If you can answer that question correctly, you will win a Yellow Productions Crew shirt. Now, Matthew, while people are typing in those answers, uh, how yep. can people find you and what will they find when they get to your channel? You can find travel and food videos and just search Say Hi to Matthew, at Say Hi to Matthew on all social media, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you search, at Say Hi to Matthew, I'll be there. So if you come to my channel, mainly Vegas travel, when I can go back, the board, they're working out the border issues right now, but um, an exclusive, maybe next month, I might be going back to Las Vegas. All right. So more Vegas videos coming soon. And I like to go on uh, cruise trips. I usually go once a year when everything is normal. So stuff like that. But mainly around food and travel is basically me and lots of pizza. <laughs> right on. That's cool. Uh, well, looking at the chat... And now we have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> there were many of you that put this answer in the chat. Matthew, is this they the correct know. answer? That is the right answer. Seeking Vegas Sunrise knows. All right. Congratulations, Seeking Vegas Sunrise. You were the first person on my screen to right. show up. I'm sure many of you will say I was first because on your screen you type <laughs> it. And it takes like two seconds for the other ones to get to you. But Seeking Vegas Sunrise is the official winner. Seeking Vegas Sunrise, you'll find my email uh, in the description of this video. Send me an email. Let me know where you want me to send it and your size. Well, Matthew, it was truly a pleasure hanging out with you today. Uh, everybody, if you haven't headed over to Matthew's channel yet, definitely head over there, show him some Thank love, you. enjoy some uh, Canadian food videos from Toronto <laughs> right now, uh, and then yeah. Vegas videos uh, when Matthew Coming gets up. back to Vegas in a, in a month or two. Uh, well, Matthew... I end videos by saying, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll say you in the next video. But, Matthew, I want to give you the final words to close out our live stream. Thank you to everyone in the chat for watching. And like I said, if you're in the Map Pack, make sure to subscribe to Yellow Productions. Great videos. And, Chris, thank you so much for having me on your show. It's been so much fun. And when things all get perfectly normal again, we'll actually make a video in Las Vegas, hopefully. That sounds good. That'll be awesome. All right. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, everybody.